Okay, so uh, we, we, we should use this time. So even though if we're not starting formally, uh, let's say that the purpose of this session was to, you know, share different experiences in different parts of the world, different teaching institutions about what is teaching architecture online, what it has been in this last semester. And by eventually sharing all these experiences, every one of us would be able to, you know, learn something new for his incoming semester, which is probably starting uh, in, in a few days everywhere. And so also we ask everybody, everyone to make a very short presentation, outlining the tools, outlining the pedagogy that is behind his online teaching activity within the field of uh, architecture and design, which I, I do believe is different from, you know, teaching philosophy or history because of the visual aspect of it. So design has to do with, you know, producing drawings and reviewing those drawings, which does not happen in other fields, such as economics or mathematics. And this makes teaching architecture online quite different from teaching uh, other disciplines, even though there might be one part of the activity which is basically the same, you know, frontal teaching. But there's one other part of the teaching which is unique to the field of architectural design, which is review, comment, discussion, critique, uh, but also the drawing activity, as long as you can do such a thing online. And some of us, some of us maybe had been experiencing, you know, collective online shared drawing uh, practices, but also I would add the exhibition of the results, uh, visual exhibition of the results, which is also something unique to the field of, you know, um, faculties of architecture, um, those who are teaching theology do not need to show, uh, you know, on the wall, the drawing, they might write something. So again, there's a, something specific to the field of teaching architecture online, even though apparently there is not much literature on this topic. Very few papers were written on the topic of teaching architecture online. And I'm sure that in the future, we're going to have more of those papers. And eventually, every one of your, you know, interventions, presentations here might become a paper later on. Uh, we also did organize two uh, symposia in Uzugi University about teaching architecture online. And we might be able to organize another one. I mean, uh, long sessions, not like this one, which is a short one. We might be able to do another one in the following months. And again, it, the purpose of the session is to improve and share our uh, online teaching tools. Okay, now I'm gonna hand it to the host uh, of the session, which is Uzge Uzguvanshi. Uzge Uzguvanshi is a PhD candidate at the Faculty of Architecture and Design of Uzge University in Istanbul, Turkey. Thank you, Uzge. Thank you, Professor. I think we reached to enough amount of participants for now. So I can start the meeting. So good morning and good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to the International Seminar on Urban Forum Session D2 at 103. During the meeting today, we ask that you keep your microphone muted unless you are speaking to the group. This session is being recorded. We will have 13 speakers today and the session will be moderated by Alessandro Kamitz. Please use the chat box located below of your screen to ask any questions during the presentations. I am, the floor is yours, Professor. Uh, thank you very much, Otsge. Um, uh, so again, let me introduce myself. My name is Alessandro Kamitz. I'm Italian, I'm born and raised in Rome, studied at Sapienza and I'm now teaching at the Faculty of Architecture and Design of Uzdegi University in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, we have organized a session to you know, put together and share different approaches in teaching architecture online, which is probably different than teaching geography or, or philosophy or any other discipline. Hence, the visual aspect of architecture, uh, especially design, and so, again, given the short time that was assigned to the session, we might be able to, 
listen to your presentation for not more than eight minutes. Please follow this time slot. I'm going to ring a bell at minute seven of every one of you. Um, so you might be able to wrap it up in, in the following minute. And we are going to be following the order of the presentations as scheduled as seen on this slide. And if somebody is not there, we're going to skip to the next one and try to pick him or her up when she joins. Uh, I will, I, I'm not included in the list of the presenters, but I, I do also have my own presentation. So I hope we can uh, have space for that one as well. And let me introduce the first uh, presenter, hopefully if he is here, um, Paul Osmond from, um, I beg your pardon, let me get it here on the other screen, University of New South Wales in Australia. Paul, are you there? Oh, I am there. Can you hear me? Yes. So we are Can ready. You see me? You're ready. If you're ready, go ahead. Yes. Right. I, I will just uh, get the slide to full screen mode and uh, slide share. Paul, when you're ready, you're good to go. Please try to keep yep. it within the eight minutes. Sure. I'm going to ring, ring a bell at minute seven. Yep. Okay. You should be able to see my screen now. Not just yet. Not yet. Okay. Live BBC songs return to Radio 3. Here is a national violinist. Okay, while you're trying to do this, what I'm going to do is show a recorded presentation of Massimo Angrilli, who is here, but, you know, he's also in another, in another meeting at the same time, so he asked me to do this, uh, share the recorded presentation, so we don't, uh, you know, waste our precious time. Good morning. I am Massimo Angrilli from University d'Annunzio Pescara, Italy, and I teach landscape and urban design. First of all, I must say that I am not one of those immovable professors who think that architecture cannot be taught online. But I am not one of those professors either who enthusiastically envisions a future where we'll totally redefine the learning experience of architecture by moving entirely and permanently our classes online. During the shutdown of my school, I've had several opportunities to experience this new working environment, giving lectures, mentoring students, participating in exam and master's degree juries, and tutoring in workshops. This last experience is what I would like to talk about in this short video. One of the workshops took place, so to speak, in the Algarve region, Portugal, and the tools we used were Microsoft Teams and Zoom. It was a design workshop on a specific site in Portimao. So the first critical point for my students, as well as for me, was missing out the, the site visit, which in my opinion is one of the most difficult aspects to be surrogated in the e-learning environment. Luckily, we had Google Maps and we had plenty of web-based photos and information. But as you know, the site visit is not only a visual experience, but it's a full immersion in the physical, social and mental environment and above all, is one of the most important and effective ways to find the concept. Another critical point was the management of the team. The building of social relationship between students of different countries who don't know each other without physical contiguity was really challenging. And indeed, it didn't work. 
the team of five students immediately split into, the, into two sub teams because Italians and Portuguese students hadn't been able to overcome the initial distrust of the other. Despite these issues, my group did a pretty good work and the students appreciated the experience. Finally, the third criticality I wanted to highlight is the difficulties in the transmission of knowledge. Contrary to what we can suppose, it has been discovered that of what we say only 7% is perceived by the spoken words. While 38% is understood by our tone of voice in his cadence and volume, which is the paraverbal part, and the 55% derives from body language, our behavior and gestures, and all the kinesthetic form of language that human beings use, the so-called nonverbal communication, and this latter part be, could be lost in online settings. To conclude, I would like to say that, in my opinion, great teaching can happen through any medium. It will be a matter of adapting and inventing new methods and tools, avoiding to replicate online the traditional face-to-face -face approach. Generation Z has completely grown up with life online, and much of the learning is material we produce is not meeting their expectations. Architectural learning requires a practical component of learning by doing, traditionally in a studio environment, to which students acquire experience and knowledge of professional practice in a social context of peers. And I can wait to come back to this exciting environment, maybe with new tools and with complementary e-learning programs that should seek to blend self-study, face-to-face meetings, to stimulate social context and facilitate cooperative work of real life professional experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Massimo Angrilli for your presentation. It would be now, now the time of Paul, if you're ready. Paul Osmond, University of New South Wales, Australia. Are you ready to share your screen? Yep. Can you see the screen now? Okay, okay. I, I do. Now I, I do. So go ahead. Excellent. Okay, I'll just set that up in full screen mode. So yes, you should see do. full screen mode now. It is. Go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we're looking at uh, the very interesting response to the pandemic. And going back to March, uh, Preamble, our Vice Chancellor and other senior leadership made the point that starting in March, university sees all in-person classes. So it was a, a very quick changeover from what people had been used to, to responding to the new pandemic situation. Our school covers a full suite of built environment disciplines. The typical way we put it is saying from room to region. So uh, you can see down there on the, the bottom of the slide, undergraduate and postgraduate courses that we run and programs. And there's been a long history of innovative approaches to education, including uh, interestingly and usefully uh, over the probably three or four years prior to this year, developing online and blended and intensive offerings. So even though there was a, a very quick pivot to fully online, there was a, a certain um, experience of having gone through this process of 
uh, transitioning courses to, to online. Of course, with studio teaching, it was a lot more challenging. Lecture-based courses, pretty straightforward. So that's, uh, you won't be able to read the detail there and that's not the intent, but you can see the, the complexity of the uh, arrangements for training staff in online teaching that the university has been developing. So technology enabled learning and teaching or TELT uh, has been the, uh, uh, the name that we've given to this. And there's been a lot of work gone into it centrally from the university. Uh, in addition, with our faculty, our built environment school, we've uh, focused on the more specialized training and software required to support studio-based learning. Uh, there was a symposium in May where a lot of this material was showcased and looking at best practice and also looking at very basic practice. So bringing people along to ensure that there was a, a fairly broad understanding of what was required with respect to uh, giving a, a really good online experience for our students in the built environment disciplines. So just very quickly go through some examples of some of the um, programs that, that we've used. For example, uh, one of them is Figma. And what Figma can do, it uh, helps with mapping and understanding uh, how to, to put together things in, in, in maps, in groups. Uh, this was an exercise done by uh, students looking at uh, architecture site visits in a, a tutorial looking at understanding digitally what they might understand if they'd uh, actually been there on site. So looking at maps, both from a standard map view and then the ground level views and trying to reconcile those two things to get a, an understanding of that kind of visual interaction. So you can see that it was done as a puzzle and we've got a, an exercise here, basically a, a jigsaw puzzle where the students were asked to fit the bits in the map from what they would observed in the virtual ground level for that particular uh, exercise. And, and it, worked, it worked out quite well. They, they got there in the end. Another one that people are probably familiar with, which is Padlet. And that's, uh, again, it's been around for a fair while. Uh, could be thought of as a digital pin board. And this was uh, looking at a landscape architecture studio, about 20 odd students. And again, uh, thinking about it from the, the point of view of groups and individuals. So the first exercise for the individuals was to come in and say who they are. So that's what this image is showing. So who am I? Where am I coming from? Getting the students to put, it, put uh, post-it notes up on Padlet with their names, sometimes if they're Chinese in, in Chinese characters, and just a, a kind of getting to know you exercise before getting into the, uh, the group work uh, for the particular activities involved. And another one that some of you may know, I don't think it's been around as long as Padlet, it's called Miro. And again, we're talking about landscape architecture studio, could equally apply to a building architecture studio where conventionally people sit around tables, working in groups, you've got the tutor coming around, checking what the, the, the students are doing, annotating, scribbling, discussing, and virtual tables is, is the, uh, the real uh, thing that we can, we can do with Miro, that we get people around these virtual tables in groups and they're doing exactly the same sort of thing. The, the tutor can come around virtually and make comments and annotate on the group work. So I'll conclude with some comments on pedagogy, because this is really the, the critical thing to, uh, to consider. So 
there, there is, there's been work done on what's called a community of inquiry framework, which provides a, a learning or facilitates a learning environment which develops three independent elements, social, cognitive and teaching presence. Uh, and all of these are equally required to get very good working relationships between students and students, students and teachers, and getting the learning actually happening. So social presence, social connections, students have a shared purpose, sense of community, they're communicating usefully. Some of the things that we can do virtually, things like icebreakers, welcome videos, other sorts of collaborative activities which help students to get that learning environment happening. There's a cognitive presence, which involves an active learning, problem-based learning inquiry model. So how the, the students are able to uh, get that happening through sustained reflection and discourse. Activities, small group activities, online discussions, shared dialogue and so on. And then the teaching presence, they've got to see that somebody is there and is available. So monitoring student involvement, ensuring that students are aware there is a tutor or a teacher they can connect with. So to, to sum up very briefly, the, the feedback we had has been very good. And I think at least part of it is due to the fact that our students have been very understanding. They recognize that there's a crisis and they're responding very well to that. And uh, uh, I think everybody's been enjoying it. Not the crisis, but the, uh, the online teaching and learning. So thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. I must say that University of New South Wales have a, has a very long experience in teaching online way before the COVID hence the student population in Australia, which is quite dispersed. So they have been running online courses in the past 10 years. So they do have yeah. a lot of experience in this field. And as soon as the crisis came about, they, you know, they, they started this task force for online teaching. I think your approach should be taken as a model by other universities instead of, you know, uh, removing the problem, you know, just taking that problem and, and solving it. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Thank you. Now the, the next one would be uh, Marco Marito from University of Parma. Uh, as soon as you're ready to go, please stay within your eight minutes. I'm going to ring the bell at minute seven. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Alessandro. Um, well, I'll try to share my monitor so you can. Okay. Can you see it? Not yet. Not yet. Now, oh, just a second. I'll try again because the. I'll try again. Sorry. Uh... Now. Now I. It started. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I put it full screen, so okay, you perfect. should see. All right. Very good. So yeah, um, thank you, Alessandro. I agree very much, absolutely, with what, we, what you've been saying about the presentation of Paul. Because uh, here in Parma, what I'm going to show you today is just something about the experience of the just past year, because uh, connect with the COVID-19, of course. Uh, also, because next year is going to be organized and you know in a mixed um, system, in presence and, um, and um, online. Anyway. Uh, the work with this, I, I teach in Parma, and um, uh, I'm the uh, coordinator of a master in um, sustainable urban design uh, that is organized in uh, integrated studios. So I show you the the, the plan for last uh, last year. As I don't know if you can read it anyway, uh, you see um, where every uh, studio or is organized with the contribution of different disciplines. We all work together under the head, or let's say, of the uh, architectural and urban design. Uh, so we have a composition for, we have a design of structures, uh, the um, technology for the sustainable design, and so on. Um, the goal was so to put together all this. Uh, contributions, all these uh, different peoples, 
in a new um, newly established you know online um, didactic uh, the topic uh, was what we have been, what we decided to to to, to follow at the beginning of the year. It was uh, um, the market hall and marketplace in urban regeneration projects, uh, because the the role of this, you know, decaying and renewing um, mall and whatever within the urban fabric, in our opinion, was a very important focus on which to let the students work for the. Um, for the, um, the new laws in urban regeneration that in Italy, in the region, Emilia Romagna have been uh, <clears throat> um, appointing just uh, a few years ago. Uh, to, so to the studio uh, participate also, uh, and took part also the CEO of the two most important Italian food commercial companies, that is Conad and Coop, because it was very important for us that to have their um, uh, contribution to the, to the debate, to the design steps. All the work have been uh, developed so on the um, Teams platform, that is the one uh, you know, used by, by the University of Parma. And it, it had been organized then in, um, in a sequence of steps. Uh, the first, the general lectures made by uh, important figures in, uh, involved in the, in the, in the topic. Uh, from Beatrice Luceri, is a very important economist on uh, dealing with uh, um, markets and um, and, uh, and urban uh, and urban problems. Uh, Vincenzo Buongiorno, uh, some of you know him already. Uh, he did a very huge studies on uh, uh, com uh, contemporary commercial fabrics. Published a book, and he's going to publish a book in a few days, and many others. Uh, so all invited to give lectures online uh, in order to create a good environment for the uh, design uh, experience. Actually, we had planned also work, an in-the-field workshop, but because of the COVID, we decided to not to follow this kind of experience because uh, I believe and we believe that actually that at the end of the day, their work in the field is very important, but and, and it, it is the core as um, of any workshop experience. So we prefer to follow the online then um, directions instead of uh, uh, on work on a, on an online workshop. It, it sounds something and sort of nonsense, let's say. So general lectures followed by specialistic lectures given by the different professor involved in this, uh, in the integrated studio and uh, core studio meetings uh, involving students, professor and professor, basically, in which we, um, you know, along the year, start sharing and uh, interacting on the, on, the, uh, on the design, on the project. It was very easy, actually, because we use laptop, we use uh, uh, iPad and whatever. So we could, uh, I wasn't very happy about this, but we could actually work together on the design, sharing monitors and, and so on. I'm not going to show you this step because the time is very, very short. Uh, after the general lectures, the specific lectures, in order to give instruments, to give tools for the students to work on the different disciplines involved in the, in the integrated studio, and the core studio meeting, we, have, we had um, three uh, deliverings along the year. Uh, during this delivering that involved all of us, students, professor, for a professor, and even the CEO of Conan and Coop, the, stu the students, uh, uh, they used to, be to, um, to work in groups of three uh, guys, uh, had 15 minutes to show the, 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 their work, to, to show um, what goals have been reached till that time, if they are asked to, do some, to the questions we put at the, the beginning of each uh, delivering design question design of course and uh, in these 15 minutes so uh, there were actually a very interesting debate between uh, professors students and, and uh, economists CEOs and so on uh, and that is uh, one of the powerful you know uh, tools and and elements of the online uh, of the online teaching all can participate all can give their own contributions uh, in a very, very uh, dynamic and active way. Consider that these guys like um, um, Vittorio Varone and Manuela Scarpelli, and sorry, and um, 
that Francesco Pugliese normally are very difficult to, to find, very difficult to reach because of the all, all, uh, working and moving all over the, the, the country. So it was very, very interesting. And after this delivering, we had, as usual, a final exam with uh, uh, um, a jury made by all the professors of architecture and urban design involved in the master uh, in sustainable design. And of course, all the different disciplines. So all the professor of the first and the second year of the master courses have been involved in this jury. Of One course, minute left, okay. sorry. Yes, I've finished. Uh, oh, um, of course, together with the CEO of Conrad and Co-op. Um, so these are some of the pieces of the project made by the guys with analysis from a morphological point of view, from an environmental point of view, the master plan in the middle of the slide, and so on. I want to say to you, uh, I believe that, of course, architecture is a, a physical topic. The in the field workshop, actually, even the presence, you know, didactic is very important. The relationship between people explaining or working on the same project is very important. But also, this um, online teaching, it can be an open, you know, different. Uh, perspective in, uh, in, in our way of teaching, in our way of thinking and dealing with uh, architecture. So let's say, let's say for the future, <laughs> what's going to happen? Thank you very much. All. Thank you very much, Marco Maretto, for your presentation and for staying within the scheduled time. Uh, the next speaker should be Burak Askiriskender from Abdullah Gould University. But if you don't mind, I forgot to share a few slides for the opening okay. and uh, so that's going to take one minute uh we don't so this uh short um session follows the two conferences we all organize on teaching architecture online which are also available on the youtube channel of urban morphology which has been established by Balmor Malgorsata Hansel. We might be able to put the session there as well if we've got the consent from all of you. Uh, and uh, we got two of those uh, eight hours uh, conferences, and we might be able to have another one. But the main point is that not everyone reckons that in, um, in the time of the plague, uh, Cambridge University was closed, was shut down in 1665. And Richard Newton, who was teaching there, uh, you know, had to go back home. Isaac Newton, I beg your pardon. So he had to go back home. And uh, in a very similar manner as we're doing today, he continued from home without the computer by writing letters. And there is where he got the formula for his gravitational law. So, you know, the lockdown does not necessarily mean the uh, slowdown of research. In this case, a very uh, important step forward was, was taken during the time of the lockdown. So just like Isaac, we should continue to learn, teach, and research, regardless of the uh, pandemics. Okay, now, sorry for that interruption. We can hand it to... Um, Burak. Okay, that's okay. Thank you very much. Hi, Sandro. Greetings uh, from Kayseri, from Turkey. Um, I'm starting to share my screen. Hopefully, you will see the screen. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, um, uh, first of all, I would like to give a brief information about our program. We have uh, undergraduate and graduate programs in our faculty and uh, the main uh, focus is based on global issues. So uh, we redesigned all of the courses, all of the program based on uh, global problems and to creating some kind of effective solutions to it. Uh, with it within this uh, scope, we have to work with, uh, we, we have to work with very interdisciplinary uh, and we have to uh, create some kind of discussion platforms in the in the in our campus uh, the, another main motto uh, for for our program is hands on doing and learning by doing uh, so uh, while we are handling without this situation it's not easy to create um, 
this creative environment. But we just think this is a kind of a problem of what is virtual, what is actual. So uh, when we compare our drawings or our profession, uh, our, our architectural professions, actually we um, mostly work on some kind of virtual issues. At the end, while we construct something, it's uh, transformed itself into an actual something. So based on this idea, we uh, think that uh, how we uh, transform our flipped classroom and learning by doing activities to a very effective uh, environment. Our main challenge is uh, creating a, a, a very active uh, remote environment. Uh, first of all, I have to remind you we are working uh, with Canvas and the, uh, as a kind of a learning management system. So our studios are based on mostly for doing something or discussing something. So it sounds a bit uh, easy to do it in the beginning. What we done in time? So the main problem, let me remind you again, analog and digital education. So there's a kind of a, a problem with the actual pens and the digital pens. But I have to ask you again, what is digital or what is analog? Uh, because all of these ones, all of these drawings are really, um, actually they are really not concrete, they are obvious. So uh, this is an uh, example of our works from our um, first year students. Uh, we did something with uh, their home, but they find, because it's not easy to find something from outside, and just organize some kind of video turtles to cut and draw or organize something and make some models about to how to understand the organization of the scape space. Uh, then uh, assist them to transfer their ideas as a kind of a poster in a digital environment. And we question again something, teaching and learning. As you know, teaching is, we, we, we understand teaching as a kind of a professor, professor's activity, but as you know, all we are learners. And we learn lots of things from this environment. We can easily um, give our critics. We can easily organize our studio environment in a digital platform. It's not a problem. Um, I know all of you experience these ones. Uh, maybe it will be much more um, easy or much more useful for the Z generation. They can easily handle up these issues very well. Um, at the end, you see the, the end drawing. This is the um, final presentation of our, one of our students. It sounds like, it seems like um, the, a kind of a drawing uh, in, the, in the studio, a work of a studio. I have to remind, this is a kind of a second year student. What we do more, uh, uh, as I remind before, we like or we prefer to do learn it by doing. So we, we have lots of workshops in our uh, environment, in our campus. If we are not in the campus in this environment, we can easily visit the uh, set um, some kind of sites or some kind of factories uh, with our cameras. They can easily organize some kind of mock-ups and students easily ask some kind of questions to them. So they can easily understand uh, at the end the main idea of the construction of designing or any kind of issue based on architecture. So these are two, three, uh, two different examples from, from that part. When at the left side, you see an example of the previous year. At the right side, you can easily see the actual one, the COVID version of this um, course. We also use uh, Mural and Miro, but mostly Mural, to create a kind of a, a discussing environment out of the studio. Because as you know, peer learning is much more important in our education. Uh, students are learn from that themselves. We have to create some kind of environments to discuss and learn uh, by themselves. Mural is, really helps us. It's a very nice platform we can easily 
at some kind of questions or we can easily organize some kind of discussion boards. They can easily share their thoughts. They can draw even. Uh, with this one, we also use Jamboard, Google Jamboard, but mostly Moodle uh, to organize these discussion platforms. At the end, as a brief one, uh, we think, um, uh, as a department of architecture AGU, the main problem is engagement and encouragement. If we engage and encourage our students, it's not a problem. We can easily handle up everything. The technology really helps us. Uh, I think it's not a problem to uh, be in the studio or be in the, uh, on the screen. The main problem is we have to survive the teaching. Uh, by the way, we are discussing and learning more and more with this environment. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, sorry, I was muted. Thank you very much for um, uh, for your presentation and, and staying within the scheduled time, which is something uh, admirable on, on on your side. It would be, thank you so much. It would be now the time of Darko Reba, uh, University of Novi Sad, Serbia, as soon as you're ready, eight minutes. Ring a bell at minute yes, seven. Yes, I'm ready. I just need to share the screen. I hope that you see the screen. Yes. Okay. Yes. First of all, thank you uh, to organizers, and especially Alessandro, who invited me for this uh, very interesting uh, meeting and session about the urban forum of the 21st century. I'm arriving from the Department of Architecture and Urbanism, Faculty of Technical Sciences, University of Novi Sad, Serbia. My presentation will be a little bit different than the previous ones because I, I will uh, present what is for me and for our team which work on the urban design uh, subjects what is the what are the main topics of the of the task for the students in the in the next period because we are uh, using uh, the platforms as everybody else as zoom and uh, moodle we have the moodle and the serbian which is called SOVA, but it is now students are very used to, to, to that platform and we are very satisfied with their results. And I will present what will be the topics of the teaching of urban form of the future cities. This, the, this is, these are the three, I think, uh, main issues for the future cities and for the task for the students. We very much put attention on the open public space for socialization because this is the, for us, main uh, places for in the city. Then the second is the public open and closed spaces for these three activities, which we think it is uh, most important for public life, the places for culture, for creation, vegetation areas and parks. And these um, places for entertainment and fun, I think it is uh, most important because uh, we, when we remember our our uh, what we uh, what we experience in the cities is very often engaged with entertainment and fun and normally communication in traffic is, is, is the topic which is always interesting in changing the urban form very very intensively. And why open public spaces for socialization? We know that we in cities have very great public spaces, but they are mostly from the past times. And some time it is, they have the really artistic value as the Campidoglio or uh, some Spanish squares or other. Uh, and sometimes it is, it is one main buildings which is, uh, have which have public space in front of them, but it is more, or gate in the Berlin and very important public space. And these three uh, pictures in the in the bottom are the, actually the new new public spaces in the city. But I think that we have very uh, don't don't have enough these 
famous uh, new public spaces with with the strong identity with which uh, give the new uh, atmosphere in the city and because of that very often the uh, task of our student works are the public spaces with which need to have the strong identity and strong program to to make socialization in the city very very uh, strong and important and the public spaces uh, build public spaces for culture we know how how they have very great energy and how people gravitate to them and uh, i think that in the future with which will be the most important points in the city Unfortunately, now with this this COVID lockdown, it is completely different. But we but we hope that uh, this situation not change the the habit of the people to go there and to to spend uh, maybe the most precious time of, of their lives in the in the places of the culture. And you see the uh, opera house in Vienna or or or, or theater in Genoa, a new. Uh, Philharmonic House on Elbe in, in, in Hamburg. And places for recreation is very often the, the, the task of students' work and we always want to have them in, in, the, in the cities and to connect the, all other programs in them. And then in the bottom, <laughs> places for entertainment. Uh, we in Serbia have very few of, of uh, places for entertainment in cities and it is very pitiful, I think, because this time when we spend for entertainment, it's most, I think, most valuable, except the education and other. But uh, you know that in Vienna, they have from the 19th century, the, the um, uh, park uh, with all kinds of entertainment and, and things which are very, uh, important thing for the not only for the uh, sport and recreation but for culture to to have the place to to spend time happily and with with the smile and maybe for the future city traffic and communication will be the issue will will which will change the urban form most dramatically and because of that we always talking about the improvement of bicycle traffic uh, on two wheels, on rails, on four wheels. We have even now in, in traffic in one wheel, but it is very rarely. And uh, because we are arriving from, we are mostly working in Novi Sad, which is the city on the plain, uh, and we have very good condition to develop the bicycle traffic, but it is not developed enough for for last couple of decades and we know that it is i hope that this change with this new electric vehicles on two two wheels will be the uh, most influential in the future and we need to think about the urban form for which will be uh, adjusted for this this type of communication then the rail of all kinds and i hope that that future uh, that's one minute Beg your okay. pardon. thank you and the future will will be the these uh, little electric vehicles in the four wheel which will uh, allow uh, more public space for the <laughs> things which i uh, talked previously and uh, these are the topics which we uh, put the main attention in teaching with the, of the students on uh, bachelor, master and doctoral studies and, and thank you very much for your attention. I hope that it will it is stopped now. Thank you very much for your presentation and the next one uh, as scheduled is Francesco Mancini. Francesco, are you there? Couldn't see him in the names. If Francesco Mancini is not here, we would have Fabiano Micocci, if you're ready. Fabiano Micocci is teaching at University of Tessaly in Greece. As soon yes, as I'm ready. here. Okay, eight um, minutes. You're gonna hear a bell at minute number seven.
Um, just just a moment. Okay. Do you hear my slide? Yes. Do you see my slide? Yes. So it's I just started from the so um Good, good afternoon to everyone. It's a very pleasure to be here and thank you, Alessandro, for having invited me today. Um, my name is Fabiano Micoc. I'm teaching, uh, I'm Italian, but I'm teaching at the University of Thessaly in Greece. And um, I just would like to start with a, with a very short uh, introduction about the theme that we are discussing today. Because uh, teaching architecture online uh, is uh, uh, it's something new only apparently, as we have also some uh, previous presentation have uh, uh, presented us that you know, they are running since many, since many, uh, many years. Indeed, there are uh, uh, courses entirely given online, but there are also many digital platforms that support and integrate the teaching activity in presence. But teaching architecture is evolving slowly as students are changing very fast. The generation of smartphone needs to find an academic environment that in some way should respect their way of using technology and media and to find a kind of mediation between uh, uh, traditional knowledge and the new challenges of uh, the society and of the future um, architects. Uh, the time that we are living uh, during the pandemic and the afterwards of the pandemic can be as a, understood as a chance to fill in a way this gap and to upgrade contents. Uh, during the semester of the lockdown, I had the chance to teach um, an elective course, uh, a theoretical elective course focused on history and theory of architecture in the city and um, in a way it made things easier because uh, I could avoid online tutorials on design projects and I will uh, it was by chance because I usually teach uh, design studios focus on urban design notwithstanding I had a chance to change a little bit the content of the course but also the way how students can interact with me but also with uh, external guests and something related to the exercise they had to deliver. Uh, at first um, I had the chance to fully use uh, the online platform um, offered by the university. It's an uh, announcement uh, on website, the e-class, uh, but also integrating with some uh, um, Google Earth uh, and so all the many online applications that are available. So we made a full use of the all potentials that, uh, that online uh, application may, may offer. Um, but the most interesting um, related uh, um, change was about, about the exercise that we had to do. Basically, they, at the beginning, they tried to do a kind of uh, uh, survey of some areas and writing some uh, essays. So I changed, uh, I changed um, completely this exercise, transforming it uh, in the process of an online call for paper, as all of you really know, uh, how to get in touch uh, and participate into this kind of uh, in, into this kind of uh, uh, calls for uh, uh, journals and whatever. So students have been introduced to the different steps of the online call for paper. Another thing that was important is because they couldn't don't have they haven't easily access to library to make the usual uh, um, research. They had to make a research mostly online, both uh, uh, looking for uh, available uh, text, uh, but also using images. And it was the, one of the most interesting part of how to make order uh, among the uh, incredible amount of information and mostly images available online. So students have been driven toward the way toward the process of collecting, uh, ordinating, selecting, and producing themselves an image to support the critical text. Another element that 
help this this idea of navigating through uh, the web was how to connect some theoretical approach and some theoretical thematics to particular case studies in a way that students had to find some, some kind of relationship but also a different way of uh, analyzing some case study through a very different um, um, theoretical approach taken from some uh, theories about uh, about the city and about urban design and, and whatsoever. Um, the lockdown was a very unique condition as it is, but uh, in a way we, it looks that we are all, or at least most of us, going back to class. Uh, most probably we learn a lot of things um, from uh, the previous semester, but also from uh, the many online relationships that we had with uh, other teachers. And um, so it's, uh, it's, a very, it's a great chance to integrate um, um, course given online, on, on class with uh, the online tools uh, to support the didactic, but mostly to expand the, didact the didactic uh, from, uh, uh, from the traditional course. For example, this was uh, a, an urban design course that I gave last year, and uh, it was in Rome. Uh, just in this, in this occasion, we had the chance to really use a lot of, uh, a lot of online tools uh, to have guests from uh, different parts of, um, from outside from Greece uh, to share content uh, and also to um, integrate uh, many things that students cannot have the physical possibility to visit because we had the possibility to make the travel in a way to uh, to feed to feed the course also with uh, with the support of online tools. Um, Um, this was this was uh, this is an image of a usual uh, class uh, that we have um, uh, the final exam uh, organized like an exhibition. But the diffusion and the uses of the online tools, uh, I think, that can only improve the way students participate and mostly share knowledge and how teachers may interact with them. Moreover, they can shape the format of the deliverables and they can also open the course to many external contribution facilitating the participation of guests and also to diffuse the outcome of the studio. In a way architectural education may be understood like an interdisciplinary collaborative and very diversified enterprise that may overcome the physical border of the environment of the class. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fabiano, for your presentation and also for staying within the scheduled time. Next speaker would be uh, Elena um, Constantinidou, who, besides being my best friend from Cyprus, is also a social professor at National Technical University of Athens, NTUA, in Greece. Uh, seven, eight minutes, you're going to hear a bell on minute number seven. Not yet, huh? You didn't start the clock. No, not yet. But... <laughs> okay, thank you, Alessandro, for inviting me and uh, including me in this uh, uh, thought-provoking discussion. Okay, uh, one minute. Uh, wait, I should wear my glasses now. Uh, share. Okay. Okay. Oops. What did I do? Sorry. What did I do? It's okay. Go full screen. Oh, it's you okay. You see? Ah, okay. All you need to do is go full okay. screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, I, we all found ourselves in an emergency situation and the virus took advantage of our social structure to spread, the structure that we tried to rescue uh, through teleconferencing windows and uh, online lessons, etc and a framework that experts say would take five to ten years uh, to formulate took place in uh, about a week when more than one and a half, uh, 1.5 million uh, students were forced to leave schools and find themselves in front of a computer screen. So we, we are experiencing the first era of distance learning, although in fact 
um, the beginning can be traced much earlier in many parts of the world. And since I come from Greece, okay, I'm Cypriot, but uh, I live and work in Greece. Uh, I should mention a Greek uh, famous architect of the 60s, Takis Netos, uh, which introduced the idea of electronic urbanism, uh, a research project for the city of the future that accurately defines the forthcoming um, application of telework, tele uh, services, teleeducation, etc. Now, concerning these new tools, uh, we could say there was a positive response since they met the need for communication and reduced the negative uh, effects of confinement. Uh, technical difficulties were obvious uh, since the well known platforms used, at least we used these platforms, most of us, were not designed to accommodate this large number of users and also they were not purposely created um, for distance learning education. There were also difficulties um, related to the lack of appropriate infrastructure, uh, connectivity, time limits, um, a capacity number of participants, etc. The possibilities offered um, by the different programs for on-screen design are limited and the DL design uh, tools try to imitate the real ones in a simplistic, if I may say, way. And there is also, of course, no convincing possibility of working on, on physical models. <clears throat> uh, more substantial difficulties are related to the lack of interaction and coordination concerning what is happening in both space and time, a necessary condition for architectural education. And live teaching, as we all know, is a performance where the teacher as the actor on stage perceives from the minimal movement of the bodies, from the looks, from the breaths, the response and interest of the audience. So it's about a transmission, not just of knowledge, but of the sense of the cloud, of uh, the meaning of things. And, and in this case, um, the, um, the physical experience is limited to the fixed cone of a focused vision, ignoring the multisensory essence of architecture. Uh, I could say that the gaze is removed or the body is canceled. Uh, so we have this grid of phases, a sum of private uh, spaces, windows of individuals uh, which will never become um, a collective body uh, unlike real space with um, <clears throat> social relations and their quality considering that the place of teaching affects quality and reception one can easily understand the uh, fatigue the difficulty intensity uh, exhaustion that is created in front of the screen surface, which is the online tool uh, space. And I couldn't uh, help it. I wanted to show you my school, which is the National Technical uh, University of Athens, which is located in the center of the city in the real world. And uh, this atrium, uh, it's the heart uh, of our school. And also it is the first archetypal spatial lesson. For me, this is important. Uh, but how can these tools respond to the multidimensional function of the design process? And how can you teach space without space? Uh, various thoughts arise concerning the nature of design, uh, uh, since it is not a technical guiding process, but reception and experience of the landscape, the concept of synthesis, not as a combination of elements clearly defined from the beginning, but as a creative process and the way to teach, perceive, interpret and create space. It seems like key concepts need to be redefined. Um, like for example, the word movement uh, or um, uh, pose uh, have now acquired a new meaning. On the positive side, is the structure and organization of the courses, documentation and processing of the visual material uh, produced, and also the expansion and outreach uh, to the international educational community, which is not bound to the physical boundaries. And this meeting we have now, it's the living example of this, okay? And so at the same time, various doubts arise concerning the quality of teaching, uh, concerning the future, if it is a permanent educational method, and what kind of architects and citizens does it specify? 
um, and there is ma and there is certainly much room for development and expansion of the digital tools, um, most uh, both in breadth and, and depth, uh, particularly those involving mixing techniques uh, of digital and analog media. Perhaps the era to produce and experience holograms of the buildings we design is not far. Reflection is needed concerning the changes we are experiencing and keep on asking questions uh, on what does technology do in architecture and what strategic choices will be made in the evolution of digital technologies and what is their cost and how open these technologies will be to be used uh, by all of us in education. Thank you. I took only five minutes as you told me in the beginning, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much um, well, for staying within the time. Uh, we are ahead of schedule and so I hope we're going to have some time for the discussion. Uh, the next one would be Tomasz Bradecki uh, from Silesian University of Technology in Poland. When you're ready. Yes, I will be ready. Can you hear me? Yes. Please go ahead, Thomas Bradeski, uh, Polytechnica Śląska. Okay, I'm I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, I'm Should be able to see my screen now. Is that fine? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation, it's very kind. Well, I'm going to share the experience which we had uh, last semester, also like you, uh, which was completely new for us because we were dealing with uh, distance learning, not standard learning. Uh, I'm going to express some uh, ideas about the course which we do every year and the final effect of that course normally is the exhibition exhibition with models of structural models of the city and uh, this time this was really a challenge because we had no idea how to make this exhibition and um, well uh, I'll, I'll just explain the methodology uh, we had 12 students working on one common projects of course we were using the zoom app like we are using now but uh, there were two issues actually how to do the physical models and how to um, do the 3D models not working together in the studio at the university and that's why we decided to go and use the augmented reality models with a special application. Uh, well uh, making physical models of the cities uh, is probably pretty obvious also uh, showing uh, the 3D model in the 3D um, the uh, website is also pretty common but the augmented application allows us to put the app into your mobile and then once you will open the model in your mobile then you can actually put the model on anything you want like you can see on the picture you can put it on your laptop you can put it on table you can put it any space and uh, on the right, you can see the print screen from my model. So being during the exhibition, showing the model on the background of the model. And um, actually we have done eight models, but these were models of the city of Aachen. We we're trying to prepare for the workshop, which is going to take in November with the Arkea project, which is going to be international workshops, obviously, now the workshop is going to be online, unfortunately. But uh, we're trying to make some analysis about the cities. So uh, these are some of the examples. This is the gross space index uh, analyzed. On the one side, you've got the 3D model. On the second side, you've got the physical model. You've got the population density model. Then you've got the building density model. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the, 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 the real, oh, that's uh, should be the opposite, <laughs> but the real uh, physical models is very, it's very nice, it's very fun once the students gather and they make it all together, especially if it is large scale model. 
In that case, unfortunately, we didn't have any occasion to do that. Um, well, uh, just to conclude, because this conference is about the uh, experiences. Well, in the, our final effect was eight models. Four of them was the real mockups, real physical models, which we done during the exhibition. My impression is that we could make really deeper research because we had some more time and we had some more digital contact. Uh, we were working parallelly on physical and virtual models, which is important. We used the augmented experiment, that's how we can call, and we had digitally coordinated teamwork, which was much better, it's much easier uh, when you work in distance if, and not if you work in the studio altogether. Your, your digital control the students, students control each other, which is better. But we had no physical contact with the models altogether and we didn't have that much fun as we should, which is a pity. But uh, the most important aspect, as I uh, uh, said in the beginning, is the exhibitions, the final exhibition. That was really hard how to do it because we wanted to present the model. That's why we really did the physical exhibition at the university on the ground floor at the exhibition space. But we had live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. But because we wanted to uh, have some comments, we asked uh, foreign professors who had comments. They were commenting this on Zoom using uh, this augmented tool and seeing what's happening on the, on the stage, parallelly. That was quite difficult to make, but we managed. Uh, our two guests was uh, Professor Kamis and Professor uh, Amistadi. Also, we had uh, some guests uh, on site, but they were just uh, Dean, one of the professors, uh, Professor Kashid, and uh, two students which were running the, the, the course. And uh, what we also did, what we don't do normally, was the video presentation pre-recorded by students. We actually, we have managed to do a sort of a presentation which took uh, four minutes, but it was pre-recorded, which was the best and good experience for the students to work, how they express, how they explain their ideas and so on. And obviously we had links to 3D model, to use via uh, web browser or via mobile app. So that's how it looked like. And uh, in the end, I just wanted to uh, introduce you two videos. One is the video of the exhibition, which is slightly longer. And uh, the another one is, uh, is the video pre-recorded by students. So uh, what is important, this is one project made, a common project made by 12 students. Uh, and obviously, obviously, me, one of the tutors. And um, the, uh, in my opinion, the, the effect was, was really, really good and um, not typical. I would say it was even a better effect that uh, we would uh, deal with that uh, normally in the class. Thank you. Okay, uh, is it uh, finished? Yes, I finished. Oh, okay, I think, sorry, I think sorry. You're muted, Alessandro. Sorry, sorry. Uh, can, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. thank you very much for your presentation and for staying within this, the even ahead uh, of the scheduled time. Uh, the next one, according to our timetable, is Jeffrey Henderson from the Pratt Institute in the United States. When you're ready, you can share sure. your screen. Great. Um, okay, uh, can everyone see my screen and hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so uh, my name is Jeffrey Anderson and I teach at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. Um, and today I wanted to talk a bit about some technology integrations that we were able to give students access to and experiment with uh, during COVID, um, which extended the experience of their remote learning to more uh, physical and tactile uh, and also spatial um, 
possibilities. Um, so uh, right when COVID began, um, we had a number of exhibitions planned for the end of the year. Um, and we very quickly switched those exhibitions to a virtual platform. Um, but we didn't want the exhibitions to just be uh, 2D media on a screen that you would experience through a web portal. Uh, so similar to Tomas's um, presentation that he showed, uh, we used augmented reality um, to provide the exhibited work with a more spatial quality and allow people to move through it physically. Um, the app that we produced actually hosted five exhibitions uh, at the end of the year. Um, and these actually now have become physical exhibitions. So on the right, you're seeing the augmented reality exhibition, which is a kind of preview of the physical uh, work. Uh, and on the left, we actually just finished this weekend installing um, the first iteration of one of these exhibitions at a house on Governor's Island, uh, just south of Manhattan. So on the right, you see photogrammetry scans of models that we had in archives that we stored for this physical exhibition. And we're really pleased that uh, we were able to follow through uh, with the physical exhibition at this offsite location. Um, we used a lot of these techniques that we developed for the Pratt Virtual Exhibitions application in remote learning um, after COVID struck um, because we found that uh, students were having a kind of not as fulfilling of an experience because they were lacking a lot of the um, physical modeling and uh, kind of spatial learning that we do at Pratt. So Pratt has a big focus on physical modeling so how do we begin to incorporate that back into their education when they're all working at home or working at some other kind of remote location? So uh, we were first able to do this kind of directly through the app with my uh, Master of Science in Architecture students, all of whom produced uh, their final project as a kind of scale model that you would experience using this augmented reality platform. Um, and we found that using this allowed the jurors to experience the model on their own terms. So similar to the experience of picking up a student's model or moving around it, experiencing the live effects of the model, um, jurors were able to experience these in a, in a new way that was not just curated content, uh, final drawings or a final presentation video. Uh, and we found that this, this really, um, made the experience of Zoom, uh, which you see on the top left, the kind of standard Zoom meeting, um, a lot more fulfilling and rewarding. Uh, so on the right, you actually see a live stream of one of the jurors moving through uh, one of the student models in their space. So in the end, the students produced eight models. They were, um, they were in groups of two. Um, and uh, each of them had their own qualities of lighting, um, texturing, uh, interaction with the context. Um, and some of them were even able to uh, animate aspects, either physical or animated textures, which uh, is, a, is, is an effect that you're not able to achieve physically. So we were able to find that uh, in some cases, students were able to explore beyond um, uh, in ways that were actually improved or augmented from the physical models that they were able to produce. Um, so this was a kind of mid-semester COVID remote learning experience. And over the summer, we were able to set up a seminar uh, with these things in mind so that throughout the semester, they could um, begin to, they, they could have more control over what they were going to produce and we could anticipate what they were going to do. Um, so like everyone else, we're using uh, Miro and we're using Zoom. Uh, and this is really great for having an archive of work, building community among students, um, asynchronously um, viewing work and building a kind of uh, community where students are annotating or adding post-it notes to each other's boards uh, and that sort of thing. Um, 
but we were also able to integrate some other technologies into Miro. You can actually host uh, content from other websites within Miro. So we were able to basically embed 360 images, um, 3D models, videos, uh, and other content into Miro, which made the experience of presenting work more dynamic and extended the range of tools that we had as critics to understand the work. So uh, like I said, Pratt has a big focus on 3D modeling. And so uh, for this summer uh, seminar, uh, we were wondering how can we uh, get a kind of minimum experience which is equitable among all the students, um, but which requires them to make um, 3D models. So we actually had a, we were lucky to have funding for this semester um, because travel was canceled for this seminar. So we took the travel funding and we applied it to uh, modeling kits that we gave to each student. So if the students didn't have a 3D printer, we provided one, we provided spools of PLA, and uh, we provided an airbrush and airbrush kit to every student. So they were able to at home have a kind of minimum supplies. And then if they wanted to model in a particular way, uh, they could um, kind of go beyond that and purchase their own, um, uh, their own additional supplies. But it's important to us to kind of level the playing field. So, you know, not everyone could afford a 3D printer before. Uh, we were able to give them a, a model which was uh, on the cheaper end, but which was able to produce um, pretty high quality models in the end. Uh, so then the question was, how do they share these physical models? We're not going to experience them in person. Uh, what, what do we do? What technology do we use to begin to capture these? So uh, we started using and uh, giving workshops on photogrammetry capture. Photogrammetry is essentially a process of um, an algorithm that identifies feature points shared among a group of photos. So you know that the photos are of the same thing and um, the software we're using, which is called uh, Agisoft, is able to basically backwards fi figure out where the camera position was from each photo taken, and then produce a 3D model out of it. Um, so uh, on the left, you see that software, the photogrammetry capture, uh, producing a 3D model. And on the right, you see within Miro, uh, being able to zoom into the Miro board, um, click on a model which is hosted through Sketchfab and be able to, to view it. Um, so this was actually, um, we found super similar to, like I said, the, the, the um, kind of pedagogical strategy of, you know, the, the professor picking up the student's model, rotating it around, viewing it from different angles, uh, discussing its qualities, um, through actually physically touching it. Uh, we found that that, that um, Miro integration with Sketchfab with the model uh, was very similar to that and uh, allowed students to um, not only just simply capture their work, but begin to curate it in different ways. Um, so the final uh, deliverable for this project was um, a hybrid model. So they were not required to, they, they were designing towers in Singapore. They were not required to uh, physically model the whole tower. What they were required to do was select a portion of it and model it at a large scale and then sample that to get textures, three dimensionality, et cetera, from their physical models. Um, and then combine it with models uh, made in Rhino and um, and to produce this kind of uh, this new form of model, which we call the hybrid model. So in their Miro board, uh, you can see that they were integrating uh, 2D media and videos, which uh, the videos were meant to display uh, different qualities of their project, either environmental or social, um, something animate. They produced a kind of trailer for their content which is a pre-recorded video uh, of their presentation, which we found actually allowed them to be uh, a, a lot more articulate in their presentations. We've actually found that the quality of uh, presentations on uh, over Zoom has actually been better um, because they're able to practice and uh, prepare stuff in advance. 
And then they produced a, a Sketchfab model of their hybrid model plus their final boards in this kind of gallery setting. So this is actually a photogrammetry captured physical model, which is about 12 inches tall of one quarter of the top portion. They then mirrored that and duplicated it over. And then they combined it with physical, with um, Rhino only plus kind of texture mapping uh, in their uh, final model, uh, which allowed them to focus on the area of detail that they wanted to um, that they wanted to focus their design on, but allow them to have the full model captured in the end. Um, so this hybrid modeling technique is something that we're continuing to use um, throughout uh, this upcoming fall term, uh, where students are going to be combining partially physically modeled, partially digitally modeled work. Uh, into this kind of hybrid ecology, which is explorable uh, by uh, critics. Um, yeah, so that's just a couple of technology integrations that we've done at Pratt, which we found to be pretty successful in um, in uh, extending experiences beyond just the 2D screen and purely uh, digitally modeled content. Okay, thank you very much uh, mm -hmm. for this presentation. It seems like he, hybridization is the key word in what we're doing and putting together different technologies and achieving new results with that activity. So next one, uh, thank you very much, Jeffrey. Next one would be Margorzata Hansel from Lodz University of Technology in Poland. And as soon as you're ready, you can go. Uh, can you see it? Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, but you see not the right one. I'm sorry. Not again. Well, uh, can you see my my presentation, please? Yes, increasing students' enrollment. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. So, uh, basically. Uh, well, first, I'd like to thank you for, for this invitation. I am really grateful and also, uh, well, I am sharing views of previous presenters, especially this about uh, kind of hybrid education, which, uh, which we need to, to look uh, for even, uh, well, of course, depending on the level of danger. Uh, well, I had the wonderful opportunity to participate in a course uh, uh, by University of Groningen uh, together with uh, several of my colleagues uh, before starting uh, of this uh, last semester. Uh, and uh, I happened to, to, to be involved in a series of lectures. Actually, I, I didn't have any design studio which uh, uh, I could share with you, but uh, also lecturing, it, it was quite of a challenge. And I think that uh, the theory which uh, we managed to to acquire thanks to this uh, course uh, before really helped me uh, kind of uh, deal with this challenge. So first, this lack of face-to-face -face contact, which we all experience uh, nowadays, uh, uh, having to, 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 to manage all these courses with uh, just Zoom and not being able to, to, to talk directly and, and see what they think which, which happens normally, and also dealing with various other constraints of students like limited access to technology, social background, etc., which are real problems. And uh, well, and uh, adding to that, uh, we need to deliver a successful narrative, which uh, not only involves interaction, but also deals with monotony. So, so they really listen to us. And uh, in order to look for solutions to that, uh, the framework which I managed to, to get uh, thanks to the course before, but also previous experience of teaching in Warsaw Faculty of Architecture where, where we did some online education before, it gave me a sort of background. Uh, and first of all, this uh, knowledge about the um, necessity to combine both synchronous and asynchronous tasks in order to achieve like a process in which the actual lecture 
it's just the opportunity to interact with the audience and to have a sort of discussion. It's, it's just one moment in the whole process which should combine a series of various elements, both synchronous and asynchronous. I am not going to go into details, you might, you might have a look, but uh, all of us are familiar with these tools and uh, we realize that uh, uh, we just need to achieve uh, a sort of uh, momentum in which the discussion is already the, the, this time in, in the process when, when students are already involved and they want to uh, go deeper and they are already engaged. So in order to look for uh, like uh, specific solutions, uh, in order to increase interaction, we might uh, uh, use direct uh, communication such as chat or voice conversations or, or just talking, yes, but we normally talk to, to a, a, you know, we're laptops, so it's not very funny. Uh, and they are looking at their laptops, no, no, not funny at all. Uh, so how to increase interactions? We have got a series of various tools such as quizzes, assignments, tasks, tests, online lessons, uh, which might enable students to practice and repeat certain skills. Uh, we might use uh, various uh, references uh, to things which students already know. Uh, we might uh, look for workshops in order to increase interaction and in general social behavior. Uh, on the other hand, we might look how to decrease monotony. And, and in here, it's hard to replace the tangible models and, and the direct contact with other people. Uh, but still, we might uh, use uh, books, we might uh, uh, draw, we might uh, ask them to read, uh, watch films, show them films, uh, and uh, we might repeat the content. This is really something which I discovered during this course in Groningen, that repetition is nothing wrong about it. And of course, we need some sense of humor, otherwise uh, it, it wouldn't work at all. So, so well, I, I, I am trying to draw. I am, I am use, I, well, I find that the largest, uh, let's say, uh, benefit of uh, teaching from home is that I can take a book and show them. And, and this is really something which I like. We might try discussion. And, and they might be involved in drawing as well or, or, or just uh, express themselves. And this discussion doesn't have to be uh, necessarily synchronous. We might also extend it as asynchronous task for later. This is also good because, because some students have got hardships to, to express themselves immediately or online. They are simply ashamed uh, for various reasons. They might have a, not tidy, uh, you know, uh, arranged uh, room and they don't want to show it. So, so there are various things. We might use various types of quizzes, charades uh, in the end, in the beginning. Uh, uh, even taking attendance might be a, char a charade. Well, so I hope I, I didn't extend, I was doing my best to fit in time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Margot Sada. Actually, you did uh, less, two minutes less than the scheduled time, but it's Thank fine. You. That's for you, uh, Alessandro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we might be able to figure out this issue about publishing the video. Maybe later on, we might be able to get the consent from all the presenters. And if they do, this could be a very nice thing to do. So thank you very much. The next speaker. Uh, should have been Nadia Karalambus from University of Cyprus, but in her place and on her behalf is Ilaria Geddes from University of Cyprus, Cyprus, and she's going to do the presentation instead. As soon as you're ready, Ilaria. I am. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, now we can see it. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, thank you, Alessandro, for organizing the session. Uh, as you said, I'm standing in for uh, Nadia, who couldn't make it today. Um, I'm going to be oh, hold on. Um, I'm going to be presenting a specific research project which has been taking place over the last uh, three years, 
Uh, it's called ZEPU, Emerging Perspectives on Urban Morphology. Uh, some of you are familiar with the project. And it's a network of uh, five organizations, ourselves, uh, Sapienza University, University of Porto, Space Syntax Limited in the UK, uh, and the Technical uh, University of uh, Vienna. Um, now, the, on the objectives of EPUM, on the one end, uh, were to review the potential of combining analytical approaches to the study of the urban form. On the other hand, was to uh, initiate a, a pedagogical exploration of how such a combined approach could be taught. Now, most of the project took place before the pandemic. Uh, so our uh, need, our reasoning uh, to develop a blended learning approach to urban morphology uh, had nothing to do with COVID-19, but rather it had to do with the fact uh, that different um, analytical tools uh, and different theories of urban form are taught in different institutions in different countries and often in silos uh, and it was very hard uh, to bring uh, all the different expertises together uh, in physical space. Um, the project um, initially focused on the object of study, so on the urban form uh, itself and uh, discussed how uh, the prevailing analytical approaches uh, to the study uh, of urban form uh, could interact together. Uh, later on in the project, we moved on uh, to place emphasis on the learner and the educator. So really discussing the passage from the understanding of cities to uh, the act of design, to the act of producing uh, new urban forms uh, in the educational environment. Uh, really, um, the focus was through a blended learning approach. So both online, uh, through um, uh, electronic uh, resources, online resources, uh, and uh, physical face-to-face uh, -face, uh, traditional uh, teaching. Now, the diversity and complexity of the urban form uh, is reflected in the variety of morphological approaches, uh, which we are all familiar with. And this is a positive characteristic, uh, but it makes it difficult to offer a comparative framework to enrich uh, the understanding of cities. So what EPUM did uh, was to propose um, a network um, of uh, researchers, of practitioners, of policy makers, of learners, uh, in order to establish, um, to try and establish a combined theoretical and operational foundation uh, for teaching urban form. Um, the key issue raised uh, by, the, uh, by the project was the way to make an effective use of different approaches in teaching. And we did this uh, for a series of network, a network of institutions, a network of themes of study, um, a network of learning activities, and a network uh, of learners themselves. Um, the uh, key issue uh, about um, Urban, different urban morphological approaches is that every institution has uh, its own different uh, particular curriculum. Uh, their own timetable, uh, their own different semesters, their own educational culture, etc. etc. So what EPUM did was to acknowledge the peculiarities and try to devise a, a method engaging different stakeholders through both physical and virtual settings both synchronously and asynchronously uh, through blended learning. So why open learning? Uh, because uh, it enables the flexibility for each learner, each educator uh, and each institution to choose their own time, uh, place and pace uh, uh, for teaching and learning. Um, so it, this enables each academic institution uh, participating in the project to keep their own academic program, uh, drawing through a potentially a collaborative curriculum, uh, but without having to change uh, pre-existing courses. 
uh, it facilitates the design and implementation of learning activities in collaboration and increases uh, the choices that students have uh, to engage, uh, not just uh, with the subject itself, uh, but also with different institutions, uh, different experts uh, and peers uh, in other institutions as well. Uh, so it's not the project's learning environments. Uh, we have a digital platform, uh, a website and a digital platform, which is partly public uh, and partly for uh, project members only. Uh, it's not a well-defined course, uh, but an open learning process. The digital platform, uh, you can visit it yourself and uh, it gives you opportunity uh, to create new learning spaces um, that transcend existing boundaries, the physical, institutional and disciplinary uh, boundaries across institutions, as well as across approaches and different methods. Uh, so it has various different functionalities uh, some of them are uh, open to the public, uh, some of them are um, for um, um, project users uh, only. The key thing um, we found uh, from the use of a platform uh, was the uh, collaborative learning activities uh, which we carried out during the project. And this is an example of one. Uh, it was a collaborative activity between uh, um, Technical University of Vienna and the University of Cyprus. That um, is one minute. Okay, thank you. And uh, it allows uh, the educators to load their own resources, the students to load their own work, and uh, for everyone to comment. And this enables uh, educator and peer uh, interaction across different institutions. Uh, we have a series of resources uh, listed on the platform, uh, including uh, videos that students can access. Uh, we, carry out, we carried out face-to-face um, -face physical um, lectures, uh, a variety of um, collaborative learning activities, workshops, uh, specific ad hoc to the project, a uh, physical workshop, and also collaborative learning activities uh, within existing courses, embedded within existing courses. Um, and um, as I said, students can load their own work. Uh, we can have events that people can access, uh, online discussions, and um, activities, um, preparatory activities online to physical workshops, uh, which happened in various places. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's basically a summary of uh, what we've done uh, so far um, and the most useful uh, sort of features that we found uh, in the blended learning system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ilaria, to you and to uh, Nadia. Send my salutations. And the uh, next speaker and last one, but actually I would like to say something at the end, anyhow, is Haval Sami from Tish International University in Iraq. Uh, so it's your turn. Eight minutes, you're, you're going to hear a bell at minute number seven. Uh, I think you're muted. We cannot hear you. You should have to unmute yourself. There you go. No, I cannot hear you. Hello? It's unmuted, but we can't hear. We cannot hear you, Haval. One minute, Professor Alessandro Kami. Uh, listen, so while you fix this problem, I'm going to make my presentation, OK? Because we are very tight with the time. So please help them out fixing the problem. In the meanwhile, I'm going to do my presentation, OK? Uh, is it OK now? Yes, we can. Yeah. OK, go ahead. Uh, 
Hello, everyone. Do you hear me now? Yes, please start. One minute has passed already. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, my topic is the teaching online in architecture, uh, challenges and solutions. We started with the problems, obstacles, and solutions. Now we are we we transfer to another level, which it is challenges. So, uh, so we adapted somehow with the teaching online in architecture. Uh, the challenges in teaching uh, architecture. I don't know in other countries, but in my country, I, I could uh, list them as the follow: technological infrastructure. The infrastructure of the country is not enough to, to, to perform. Still, it's very good according to the last uh, years, but now still we have some, uh, some kind of challenges, which is lack of electricity, lack of internet, and lack of technological infrastructure. In my university, well, we solve somehow these kind of problems, but still some universities, they don't have enough uh, infrastructure, tech, technological infrastructure to perform the, the online teaching. And the second challenge is lack of uh, experience, especially in architecture. Uh, lack of experience of tutors, lack of experience of students, and lack of experience of family. Uh, if you ask what the relation between family and this kind of online teaching, uh, in, in, in the countries the fam the, which the family number or the size of family are big, which they have four, five to six uh, children, so they could not provide a learning medium for them during their, their live sessions or the online teaching. The other challenge, which it is the sense, sense of mass, sense of material. During online, we could not have a sense of mass, a space, as one of, uh, some of the uh, professors discussed before me, that how could you design a space without sensing the space or the sensing material? How could you use a material without sensing the material? Or how could you teach the students how, or the, the, the material science and the, the kind of uh, these masks? The other one, which teamwork and workshops, and the, the, one of the works of, of architects are leading the teams or teamwork in, in, in design or in projects. How could you teach the students this kind of uh, leadership or this kind of managing of the, of the team workers, on-site teamwork? Experience in lab or workshop, how could we, the challenges of workshops? I will try to, to, to go very quickly because we don't have enough time. Teaching in architecture, we always, uh, as our universe, as our department, divide the courses into three different types, which design-based learning, learning, so design-based courses, technical drawing practice workshops, which they improve the technical, the drawing and illustration ability of the students, theoretical knowledge of the students, which they, they improve, the knowledge of the students in theoretical parts. The other thing which it is managing uh, teaching process, managing of the, this online teaching, which it is quite difficult uh, uh, according to our lack of experience, managing teaching process, checking outcome of the students or for the teaching, and motivation activities within architecture, we need a lot of this kind of motivation activities. Now I will go to the, the <coughs> design-based course. I will, I will try to explain uh, these uh, three type of courses, how, what are the challenges and what are the solutions. Design-based courses, uh, we have the problem of sense, which it is, comes in the first uh, part, in the list. How could you set or feel the sense of this building, this space, this mass or material? 
and the online discussion is they have limited access to check the project when you have the the physical project you can check in different views and you can see the details and you can see the overall project uh, when it's online you you will be limited with this evaluation and feedback and able to see overall project so the solution is for this kind of uh, challenges and using virtual reality technology which it is nowadays still is not available in every program for every uh, place within this kind of uh, programs or applications we can reduce the these or we can compete with these kind of challenges online discussions we can use different platforms uh, with which they have the the, uh, the option of notation on the programs or remote access programs in zoom we have a limited uh, part of this kind of programs i hope that the the uh, software developers or program developers they can develop this kind of uh, needs for architecture and evaluation and feedback enable to see over all the project we can um, and it is a, a, a little bit difficult to to see all the project within the the small screen the the touched or the, the touch screens maybe we can help this kind of project is technical drawings or practice workshops challenges techniques and fineness of the drawings how could how could you uh, develop the the illustration and the drawing ability of the students uh, when you cannot see the details of this project within uh, in in, in um, that's uh, one minute left and these techniques we can use video records of to for teaching the techniques we can use the video record of hand drawing for technical drawings for the lecturers and for the sketches and drawing development we can use the the uh, screen touch pads but it needs a financial support especially for the countries that they are developing countries the people they are not in a that way they have they don't have ability or they don't have financial enough financial income to to buy this the theoretical knowledge which is maybe we can say it is easiest but still <laughs> we cannot uh, <coughs> sorry we cannot uh, get enough uh, discussion with the students the challenges are body language body language is one of the important uh, part of of teaching during the class which will be missed in in in, in uh, online teaching discussions and assessments which they are the challenges of theoretical parties for body language we can use virtual rooms or video techniques for discussions you can use meeting platforms and assessment uh, we can use case studies that they can the assessment can be based on critical thinking thinking and analysis for the managing of teaching online in architecture there is the different also challenges which we can use different platforms as our university we are using mercury which we can uh, control or recheck the the process of of teaching uh, it has different op opportunity for, for for recorded video for live sessions for assignments and for for the students there that can be a platform to connect with the lecturers motivation activities uh, we are planning to have some online exhibitions or online uh, competitions which they are a part of the motivation of for the students without this kind of motivation the students will be uh, or they cannot be encouraged in order to 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 continue for the uh, especially for good students checking outcome evaluating the program learning outcome through the online it will be might quite difficult 
and uh, this also can be uh, used by or can be done by the uh, some kind of platforms or uh, online teaching platforms uh, so as a conclusion i can say that three months ago we started or five months ago we started a, a, a journey for teaching online in architecture how about now, we have to wrap it up very quickly because your time is over of two minutes okay thank you thank you very much i have finished everything and just uh, uh it's okay we can finish it okay thank you very much for uh, sharing all this uh, with us uh so i had scheduled my own presentation which is going to be much shorter than it was meant to be hence the time is almost over but i'm going to be timing myself as, as well with the seven minutes and so modes of interaction and conversational framework according to recent pedagogical studies teaching is about interaction and the conversational framework uh, by Lori Lord is showing that the modes of interaction which has always been analyzed by others uh, we have so many different modes of interaction between student and teacher and this is not online this is in general but when you bring it online all those different modes of interaction, which I'm not going to go in depth right here, but cannot be just replaced by the online uh, lecture, which is what most of the people have been doing in the beginning. So when we went online in March, we established a research team with Giorgio Verdiani at University of Florence, Stephen Gayalak and Ozgios Guvanci at Ozgi University to study the different tools we could use for the online reviews of our studios, which is one of the modes of interaction that we have in the teaching of architecture. One is the lecture, one is the assignments, the other one is the review, and also we have the exam. So we went through different modules, such as the integrated plugin of Moodle that allows you to do some graphical remarks on assignments and PDF and uh, Microsoft Teams, which has its own integrated Microsoft whiteboard tool, quite powerful, if you wish, uh, integrated in Teams, which is what we are using in uh, online teaching, but also the OneNote notebook, which is also integrated within the Microsoft teaching package, if you wish. The Google Classroom integrated um, comment form, which is, uh, quite powerful even though it does not allow any graphical you know you cannot draw you can put boxes and notes the google jamboard which revealed to be the most interesting one uh including the google educational oh, suite change. and quite powerful but also we looked at the difference that we have between the you know uh, summative assessment, the formal review or jury or final review, and also the intermediate um, uh, reviews. But in, in architecture, we have a review every week, basically. And so this is how we looked at the formal ones, the juries, the three juries in one semester. So external members invited, and a very extensive and detailed rubric for all of those juries explaining in detail everything that was requested the timing the you know the submission guidelines everything had to be written even though it was explained by voice but not leaving anything in you know uh, open to interpretation and then we established a very simple system for the distributed online report where every jury member would be able to grade and give comments where those comments would be visible and accessible uh, to the students later on but also using zoom uh, or teams we could have some graphical interaction by noting on top of the drawings that were submitted by the students and instead the informal review that activity that is done weekly if not twice a week sometimes in the studio which instead has no uh, jury and we did this with google jamboard which allows you to upload a jpeg and then draw on top of that with a, a, either with your mouse or with an ipad or tablet and so these are some of the results of this kind of activity the studio 
302, which I run with Osgeil Gubanchi, uh, looking at the fragment of urban tissue within Galata, the Yoglu district of Istanbul, next to the Genoese walls. And these are some of the results, which was this 30 year studio done uh, entirely online, except the first two weeks, let's say. And results are pretty good, in my opinion. Um, uh, the graduation studio for two that we did with Luca Orlandi and Zeynep Cenelli and Zeren, I'm not going to name them all, but um, and also with the help of Uzgios Gubanci, looking at the waterfront of the Beyoglu district in Istanbul. These are some of the best student results, but even here, uh, I, I do believe that the you know results of this done, done entirely online are pretty good. Uh, we also had a, a online virtual exhibition of the results, which I'm not going to show you because it would take uh, too much time. But also we practiced in the summer semester within two, in not entirely online, but mostly online summer schools, one in the, Ro in the Roman photo in Rome, and the other one in a small town called Castelvecchio Cavizio in Abruzzo. Both of these schools were blended because we had a team of people on site, but the students were at home. So the blended part was the site visit, which was done with video uh, techniques, uh, synchronous. Uh, excuse me, Alessandro. Uh, this is Brenda. We, we uh, need this room for the plenary session in just about five minutes. I know, so I'm done. Let me, let me get to the point. I got two more slides to go. It's time, everything is time. So in this schools, we developed a system of online teaching, which is a distributed system, looking at the medieval classroom. I'm not gonna go in detail, but that's what it is. So the, all the different interactions are established within different tools. Padlet, Coursera, uh, Google Drive, Google Meet, Google Classroom, uh, Zoom, and you name it. We had, and, and, and Jamboard. So using the Jamboard, in a way in the Google Classroom. So, and these are the results very quickly. This is a work in the Jorge Agripiana. Uh, it's, uh, what is it? A 10 days work of a team of four people. And this is the one we did in uh, Castelbecco Calvicio. Again, using the distributed learning environment, Google Classroom, Coursera, Padlet, uh, uh, Jamboard. And these are the results, which I'm gonna go very quickly through just to show you that these tools can provide you some very interesting results. This uh, animation is not moving. It is moving, there you go, one second. I'm done, Brenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is going to stop this meeting, that it stops recording, <clears throat> excuse me, um, give it, like two minutes and get back again so please come back in about two minutes okay thank okay you. thank you very much okay. everyone i would like thank to you. repeat my uh thanks to Osgils Gubanchi, the host and zhang shu feng the co-host and we're going to hear from you later on with emails yes. thank you very much um thank you very much